this evening. <clears throat> this morning when the pastor said he was going to be in Alaska uh, this afternoon, well, he left for Alaska. Uh, he's going to settle down right where that earthquake was. Um, and um, I thought to myself, thank the Lord for Tony. And then uh, Tony decided to go to the hospital today. And uh, then that eliminated Brenda from helping out this evening. <clears throat> and then Marty's on call tonight. So he was able to be here for choir practice and to practice some music with Brenda and Gary, but he had to leave because he's on call. And Ray can't get out of bed because of his back. And I don't know where the sound people are tonight, but they're gone and can't be here tonight. And um, do, do you see the condition we're in? Back on the altar, maybe. You, you, you are stuck with me, and I was, uh, I wanted Gary to play bass instead of leading the singing. And then I thought, now see, I do good leading the singing, but I'll let you in on something the choir already knows. I don't sing a word. I just mouth the words and get you to sing. Uh, I have a terrific voice. I just tear it up getting it out. And that's, a, that's the problem with that. So I said to Gary, can you uh, play the bass and sing? He keeps me singing. And he says, ooh. I, I don't know about these guitar players that think they're not supposed to be playing the leads and stuff like that. We were saying, hey, let me tell you, Brad Paisley can do it and Keith Irving can do it. Why can't they all do it? You know? I said I couldn't do it. I said I didn't want to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if we'll all stand, what page is that? It is 125. <laughs> Within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in all of life ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing. As I go, guess we'll take up the offering at this time. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife. Discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Feasting on the riches of his grace, resting neath the sheltering wing, always looking on his smiling face. That is why I shout and sing, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Sometimes he leads through waters deep, trials fall across the way. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, see his footprints all the way. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, 
keeps me singing as I go. I have to confess something before you do that last <clears throat> verse. It looked like Greek to me, and I realized my page says Jesus keeps me happy. I'm on the wrong song. Uh, <laughs> So I'm just following you, but I didn't know what verse is, is. Is that the last verse? There's eight verses. There's eight verses? <laughs> no, this will be the last one here. Oh, this is the last <laughs> one. Okay. You're, we're covered. We got you covered. Don't worry. Okay. On the last verse. Oh. Soon he's coming back to welcome me Far beyond the starry sky I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown I shall read with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Now you can be seated, but that doesn't mean we're stopping singing. Uh, but this is, we're going to let you relax tonight and sit and sing. Do you remember that that's how you used to do it? The congregational songs, everybody was seated when they sang. And then we learned that you're supposed to all stand when you sing. And so lately, that the last few years, that's what's been happening here. Okay, this is request time. Is there a hymn that you would like us to do tonight? 199. 199. That's another problem. My book doesn't have all the pages in it. <laughs> to Canaan's land I'm on my way where the soul never dies. My darkest night will turn to day where the soul never dies. No sad farewells, no tear dim dies. Where all is love and the soul never dies. A rose is for me where the soul never dies and I will spend eternity where the soul never dies no sad farewells no tear dim dies where all is love and the soul You know those words by now. Just sing it. Look up and sing it. I want to see your faces. I'm on my way to that fair land where the soul never dies, where there will be no parting hand and the soul never dies. Sing it now. No sad farewells, no tears. Where all is love and the soul never dies. This morning, this afternoon at dinner, my mother-in-law said to me, she said, I just love to hear them sing at Lakeside. She said, that never gets old to me. I love to hear the con congregational singing. Did you know that up here, we don't hear a bit of you? We can't hear you up here. At the old church, we could hear the singing, and I was always amazed at how good the singing was. I'm glad it still sounds good to some people out there. Last verse. What was the last verse? Oh, we did we the last verse? We could do another verse. Oh, okay. Well, another song. <coughs> he needs a book. <laughs> Somebody got another song? Jesus, hold my hand. Okay, Altos, you got to sing this one. Amen. 
52. Are we all on the same page? This pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me, leads me safely through the sinking sand. It is the Christ of Calvary. This would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day to help me do the best I can. For I need the light to guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus. A microphone. Cameron, come to the drums. You with a cold is a whole lot better than me, perfectly okay. So grab each of you, grab a mic. Gary, I want you to play bass. No, you got to hold it up. You both need one. The chorus is what I'm concerned about, ladies. That's on? I don't know. They don't even know if the mic's on. They act like they've never done this before. For, for you visitors, they did this last week. Now, it's on the chorus. Now you're going to have to sing on that last verse.
you know that chorus. We're going to do that chorus again, and you're going to help us out. Now, I saw a couple of you going like this when you were singing it. <coughs> and I saw a couple hitting the side of the pew a little bit. Let's get rid of Pentecostal. <laughs> that song goes. All right. You're going to have to just fill me in on the last line. Okay. Oh, I got it. I've got it. You got it? I think I do. Praise the Lord. Can't see. All right. You just hold it in until it comes on. Hold it in. This one. I think I got it now. I can't find it. I oh, is that what it is? Here, just give it to me. Okay. You got one now? No, it wasn't on. Okay. Well, we use that one or this no, one? No, we use that one. Okay. All right. All right. We're having a good time, aren't we? I haven't clapped hands in church since I went to church with mom and dad. <laughs> Are you All right. serious? No. I do. Um, no, I'm not saying that. I, there's a lot of folks, you know, have a bad connotation. They think us Baptists can't enjoy ourselves. They think the Pentecostals, the only one can say amen and hallelujah and all that. This morning, our pastor had had a, uh, Brother Luther Stanley, our pastor, had had a back, major back surgery. This was his first Sunday back in church. He was so happy. He was so happy that he preached a sermon. I mean, he worked up a sweat and he was having himself a good time. <laughs> and I sit back there and I just, I felt I was going to start doing some laps pretty soon. <laughs> and it's good to be in the house of God and, and sing songs that mean something and talk about the word of God because it's great. Go ahead. I have never seen the face of my Savior. Oh, but serving him has been such a thrill. I have never seen the gates to that city. Oh, but one day, one day I will. Well, one day I'm going to walk on streets of pure gold. And they tell me the half 
has never yet been told I'll be united with loved ones on Zion's holy hill one day one day I will now from the time I first met him, oh, he's been all to me, and my life with his joy, oh, he has filled, how I'm longing for the day when my eyes shall behold him. Thank God one day, oh, one day, I will. Now oh, one day, I'm going to walk oh, on streets of Paris gold and not have the sights that's never yet been told. I'm gonna be united with loved ones on Zion's holy hill. Yes, one day, oh, one day I will. Oh, one day. Some of us, you hear the pastor and Tony both talk about being saved as small, as small children. I was seven years old when I was saved, and sometimes you think somebody that young is just too young to begin to experience the kind of things that you do when you get older. And I know there's times as I'm getting older that I, I have to really sense the presence of God, or I get very frustrated. But I can remember even as a child, I, I remember I was in the fourth grade, and I had a teacher that was just as mean as a snake, and we had a test, and I didn't know about it. And I remember saying, Lord, I know I'm not supposed to pray for you to take this test for me, but help me to remember the answers and now that didn't always work, but that particular test, I just somehow knew the answer to every question <laughs> she had. Amen. And, you know, that might seem childlike and unimportant, but it emphasized to me, even as a child, that he cares. He cares about his own. And if you're his child, one day you're going to see him Amen. face to face. Praise the Lord. I want you to go back and do that last verse, and I want you folks to just listen to those words. From the time I first met him, he has been all to me. And my life, with his sweet joy, he has been. Friend, I'm longing for the day when my eyes shall behold him. I said, thank you, Lord. Well, one day I will. Well, one day I'm going to walk oh, on streets of purest gold. Oh, that the half has never been told. I'll be united with loved ones on Zion's holy hill. One day, oh, one day, I will. I said one day. 
Feel like it. Glory. Time now. <laughs> they should have known. They told me I don't really need one of these things. But that's okay. We'll be fine. Take your Bibles and let's turn to the book of Job. Book of Job. I'm really going to teach you my Sunday school lesson that I taught this morning. I, I'm going to preach it this time. I'm not going to teach it. I'm going to preach it this time. Job is uh, one of the oldest books in the Bible, if not the oldest. And there's so many things there that you can read in Job and get so much out of it. I've enjoyed, uh, I enjoy reading the Word of God. My wife and I, last year, I had uh, a lot of things happen in our life. And we, had, we were in a hospital, a lot of hospital, and, and finally we got straightened out, and they found out it was asthma that caused me all my problems, nothing, nothing really major. So I went to a pulmonary doctor, and he's now working on getting me one of these inhalers, one that I can live with, and I, I sure hope he finds one soon, you know what I mean? But uh, look with me here at Job chapter 1. Let's stand, shall we, as we read God's word. I'm going to read the first five verses here. Job chapter 1. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job that feared, uh, that, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and escheweth evil. Now, you say it your way you want to say it when you preach, and I'm saying it this way this time, okay? Here we go. And there were, there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all men of the east. And his sons went and, fe and feasted in their homes, in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for the three sisters to eat and drink with him. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all, for Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts, and thus did Job continually. Now, there, I'm going to violate my thing. Just, I'll go on a little farther. Now, there was a day when the sons of, Job came to present, uh, the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan... Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, I'm going from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, and a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Let's pray. Father, we come to you today and we ask you, Father, would you speak to our hearts as we stand? We realize that we can preach the word of God ourselves, but it won't do a bit of good. It won't have any edification to anybody. 
There will be no spirit about it, and therefore it can't help or cleanse anything. But you've promised when your word is preached, and preached from a heart that is pure, that your spirit will go out and will touch lives and change people. So, Father, we come to you and ask for this presence of the Holy Spirit to be with us. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. Speak to us and through us. Help us to be a blessing to our folks tonight. Lord, uh, just have your will and way in the service. And, Father, help us to do and say what you would have us to say tonight so we can enjoy your presence. Lord, you draw the person that maybe needs to be saved, get closer to you, confess their sin, whatever it be. None of my business, but as you speak to them, help them to obey you tonight, we pray. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. There is a, there is a, there's something that sometimes we have to look at. We've had a group of people for years that say that you can live perfectly above sin. And they've talked that way, and they said, Every, if you don't live perfectly above your sin, you lose your salvation. Well, it's not true. Bibles, when God does something, he does it eternally. When he put the sun up there, it's still there. When he put the stars up there, they're still there. The moon's still there. It's an, isn't it an interesting thing in the Bible where that we read where God in the first day did this, first day did that. What do we call the time the sun, when the, the sun is shining? It's called day. And then he called it night in the Bible. We call it night when it's dark. And the stars, they call them the stars. And the sun, they call them the sun, the moon, the moon. And you know what? He said, let there be seasons and let all these things. And when God put it in place, it all worked. The rivers went one way and the, everything worked and God just had it ordered out in a perfect way. And you know what, folks? It has worked that way ever since God has put it in place. And it's going to continue that, to work that way until the Lord takes us home. Amen? So the thing I'm looking at here is Satan comes around and Satan has always been an accuser of the brethren. Always. He always is saying, now if you just do this, let us do this to them, they'll curse you and die. They'll do all that other stuff. Well, he comes here and, and I enjoy, I don't know about you, but sometimes people say, boy, I enjoyed that song. Or, I enjoy this. Everybody likes to get a compliment, don't they? But how about if God said to, about you, have, Satan, have you considered my servant? My servant. Not somebody else's. This man has stood the test. He will do whatever I ask him to do. He'll do it the way I told him to do it. He obeys me. He doesn't, I, I, I don't have to worry about him. He's my servant. There's not another man like him in the earth. Not another one. Look what he says. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and walking up and down. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? A servant. You know, when you look at those, uh, you find all kinds of things. A servant is a person who performs duties for others. A servant is a devoted helper, a, a helpful follower or a supporter, a helper, a follower, or a supporter, and guided by something. And God said, this guy does all those jobs so well, there's none like him anywhere. He's a servant. He's just a servant. We used to go to church, and they had this fellow there, and his name was Bill Androsian. And Bill Androsian was a sweet man. Everybody called him Brother Andy to include his wife, honest to goodness. And, I mean, this guy was, you would go to church, and he was busy all the time. He was the church clerk. He was uh, the finance man. He went out and picked up trash around the place. He took out trash. He did anything and everything. Whatever the preacher wanted him to do, Johnny on the spot. You need a volunteer? Brother Andy's hand had a spring on it. This guy was something else. His neighbors looked at him and they thought, what a sweet guy. But they didn't like it when he used the flashlight to cut his grass at nighttime. <laughs> he was just a different kind of guy. And Brother Andy was just there. And his wife said to him one day, said, I believe you love that preacher more than you love me. Isn't that amazing? I don't think you'll find too many people like that. And Job was a guy that God himself said, have you considered my servant? And then he said something else. Now watch what he says here. And he said, there's nothing like him on the earth. He said, he is a perfect and upright man. 
He is, look at that. He said, he's one that feareth God. And here's that word again, escheweth evil. Now, however you pronounce it, it means, he says here, it, it liberate, and you deliberately avoid, abstain from, avoid, to avoid habitually, especially on moral or practical grounds of shunning something. A synonym for escheweth means to avoid, dodge, duck, evade, elude, get away from. Well, we'd be a whole lot better if we did all of that with sin, wouldn't we? We'd dodge it, evade it, duck it, get away from it, and just not be a part of it. And Job was a guy like this that God himself said, now here's a man that I can give him anything that I have, turn my back on him, and walk away, and I know what he'll do. Boy, that's nice to know people like that, isn't it? Here he says, he says, he prayed for his kids. That'd be better if parents would quit cussing their kids and pray for them, amen? It'd be a great thing if the family was back where it ought to be. There is a need in this country, folks, for good, godly people to run. They've got, they put out these presidential candidates here, and I'm telling you, if that's the best we got, we're in trouble. There are people that got more skeletons in their closet than Carter's got pills. We need somebody who knows what the precious hand of God can do. We need somebody who will follow after the word of God. We need people not worrying about what God says in abomination and trying to approve it. We need a standard again. We need a standard in our country that we work at. Job says, Job's life was more than suffering and sorrow. And a lot of people think a Christian person can't have any money. They think they're poor and they're half nuts and they don't have any clothes. They don't have anything. Job had more goods than anybody there. And he didn't obtain them the wrong way. He obtained them because he worked for them and did exactly the right thing. And he got them the right way. And Job was a man that God could bless. You remember, you can go time and time again about lots of people in the word of God if they will just follow the Lord, how God blesses them. You look at the four children of Israel. It reminds us so much of us today. I'll draw back the water for you. Give you a cloud to walk under during the day so you're comfortable. Give you a cloud of light at nighttime when you're walking so you see things and, you, and you're warm. And then complain. The guy said they'd complain if you give them a good beating. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know what? Have you ever thought about how much it is? The Lord rained down manna out in the wilderness and everybody liked it. Went to the restaurant the other day and nobody could make up their mind what they wanted. Isn't that amazing? God has got so many things for us, folks. Look at this. He says, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? For naught. He said to him, has, has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Satan said, no wonder he loves you. You take care of him. You protect him. You put a hedge around him. You give him, you bless everything he does. If he plants a crop outside, it's the best one in the territory. You can wonder why. Just because he's serving the Lord. You know what? If, if you ever stop and think about it, some people say, you're the luckiest person I ever saw in my life. No, I'm not lucky about anything. I'm blessed. I've, uh, I laugh. I've got an old 1995 Ford pickup truck. I, that, is the, that old thing is more fun to barrel monkeys to me to drive it. Uh, it I, I got one that was worse than it, and Dave, I named it Jake. <laughs> and I bought this old truck about six, seven years ago, and I called it Nathan. It's, a, it's one up on Jake. And I bought an old Ford pickup. It's an old six-cylinder inline, six, five-speed. Gets 20 miles to the gallon. The air conditioner works, doesn't leak anything, and it runs and just won't quit. One day a friend of mine and we were sitting in the old truck and I was sitting on Michigan Avenue in Hannon and a car, I'm sitting at a red light and this car came up from behind and hit it. And I mean, he must have been texting or something and 
he come up and he hit that old truck and you know he tried to swerve left but he hit the left bumper and he was driving one of these little Honda SUVs and I'm telling you it was leaking everything to include windshield washer fluid on the thing I mean that, that whole front of that thing was gone it was completely gone and he, they put that thing up on a flatbed and were carrying it away. And they said, how's your truck? And I looked over at it and it was, it had some notice, it had a few more dents, you know, a little more character, you know. And <laughs> I looked at that old truck and we got in and started. It just drove like a champ. Just went right on the whip. It was my business. And so I got home and I called my insurance agent. And I said, somebody hit me from the back. He got a ticket. He admitted it was his fault. He said, what should I do? He said, well, if you can prove it's, more than $1,000 of damage, they'll give you $1,000. I paid $800 for it. <laughs> Listen, I took the, I called up and I said, you know, I've worked at car dealers before and I know this much. If you want to get a high appraisal on a repair, go to the car dealership, right? I went over to the dealership and this young girl come out and I've got this old car just full of rust. I mean, it, it looks like it's got 280,000 miles on it. And she got out there and started looking at it, and she said, they're going, they're, they're just going to go ahead and total it. <laughs> Honey, it looks totaled already. <laughs> and so she come out there, and she figured out what it would take to fix it, and it was $3,200. And when I quit laughing, I called my insurance agent up, and I told him, I said, $3,200, that good enough? He said, all right. They sent me a check for $1,000 for my old $800 truck. And that old truck is still running. And I, it was all bent up around the tailgate and the fender, and I, I started to open it up. I got it open. It wouldn't close back, so I went out and got me my old hammer set and started messing with it, and I got it to where it would close. So I took the $1,000 and put it in the bank and carry it right on. Amen? <laughs> it wouldn't know the difference. No way. You know what? God can bless you in every area you want. I mean, an old car heats up in the summer. It heats up in the winter and gets cool air in the summer. Doesn't burn the oil, doesn't drip in the gas, gets gas mileage. What does yours do? Amen? Let me tell you something. I serve a God who can do things. I was working a bus route at Ecorse Baptist Temple, and we had this old Ford bus, and it threw more oil out of the carburetor than it did anywhere else. We could put three quarts of oil in it, making a bus round, taking, picking up the kids and taking them home. And I had everybody and his brother look at it, and I went out there, and I got my hands on both of those rails when you walk in. And I said, now, Lord, I don't know what's wrong with this thing. You know I've tried my best, and I've had other people look at it, and they don't know what's wrong with it. You know what's wrong with it. We're using it for you. I'm not asking you for something that I can do. I just don't know what to do to help it. Would you help it? Would you make this thing all right? Would you make it work to where we can use it for the kids? You know what? That old thing quit burning oil. It didn't sound any better. It quit throwing that oil through the carburetor. And you say, well, now God can't do that. Well, like you think he can. I think he can. How's that? The Bible tells me that God can do anything. You know what God cannot do is he can't do what you think he can't do or what you don't have faith enough to believe he can do or he won't do what is not his will and what doesn't, uh, doesn't agree with his word. But if it agrees with his word and he puts his blessings on it, God can heal an old bus as well as he can heal me and you. And he hasn't changed any. He can heal us today. Pentecostals ain't the only one can get healed. Let me tell you something. There's, there's something to this. He looked at Job and, and Satan looked at him and he said, now, he said, you put a hedge around him. But he said, but put forth thine hand now and touch him and all that he hath and he'll curse thy face. Curse you right to your face. That's Satan's line every time. Job didn't curse God. Later on, you'll read where his wife said, Job, you ought to curse your God and die. And he said, you speak like a foolish woman. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wouldn't it be nice if we had people in the White House that would pray and ask for God's direction instead of doing the silly stuff we're doing? 
We need to quit being Republicans and Democrats and being child of God and pray and ask who God wants us to vote for and try our best to do it. I know things are bad, but I don't have a license to sin. Neither does anybody else. I'm supposed to occupy till he comes. I'm supposed to do everything that I'm, I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to be wise and look around, and I'm supposed to be active in everything that we do. My next door neighbor went out there and asked, last time Obama ran for the White House, he said, I know who you're going to vote for. I said, well, how do you figure that? He said, I'll just know. <laughs> they took my sign out of my front yard and laid it down, hoping I wouldn't put it back up. So I put it back up. They took my sign that I had voting for the president, and they laid it out in the middle of the road. I walked out there when the traffic wasn't coming, and I put it back and put another one next to it. Ain't not going to stop me. You know what? My God's been too good to me. Me and Dave, Dave's been over there too. I was in Vietnam and I went in the first time we had a two-hour rocket attack. And I was sitting in that, in that place in the bunker and you could hear me praying for a city block. There are no, there are no atheists in a bomb shelter, buddy. They used to call me preacher and they'd say, thanks for praying, preacher. Let me tell you what, when things got bad... They wanted to be around somebody who was under the influence and the leadership and the blessings of God. And I tell you, folks, if we'll just exercise and do what God wants us to do, other people will want what you've got, and you can tell them about them and lead them to the Lord, and we can turn things around a little bit. I don't know when Jesus is coming. You don't know either. Nobody knows. But I'm supposed to work till he gets here. I'll tell you what. I'm not going to retire. I'm going to re-up. We're going to have a good time. We're going to serve the Lord together. I heard about a good old friend of ours, Brother Case. What's his first name, honey? Herschel Case, 73 years old, been a missionary, been a pastor at home, and he was at our church, and he was doing a financial uh, uh, faith promise uh, offering for, the, for missionaries. Loved the man. He started a church when he was 73. We just found out the other day he died in the pulpit preaching. What a way to go. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I'm retired now, and I've, I've got benefits, but my benefits when I get home are just out of this world, I tell you. There is something else. Now look at this. The Lord said unto Satan, he said, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself, put not thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And I'm done with this. Satan can attack you in every way possible. Except one thing. What has been bought by the blood. And paid for by the blood. Cannot be disturbed. See, we're eternal beings. I'm going to live. So I'm, I'm the, this body will die, but I'm not going to die. I'm, listen, now what I was thinking about one day I will. Hey, I, I, that's more, I believe that is more truth there than anything else I know. I'm going to heaven one day. I may go tonight. I may go tomorrow. Who knows? Jesus may come in 50 years. He may come tonight. I don't know when. I read an old book by an old preacher, and he said, if Jesus doesn't come soon, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. This world cannot last much longer than it is today. It's a sorrowful world that we're living in, and Jesus must come. And it was written in 1935. Well, he's coming. I've heard Dad say, we're in a Saturday evening time of Jesus coming. And we are. One day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day with the Lord. I don't know when Jesus is coming. Job didn't either. But Job's testimony was simply this. I'm going to serve God while I'm here. I'm going to try and win as many people as I can while I'm here. I'm going to spread the good word everywhere I go. And I'm going to tell everybody that I come across that I serve someone who can save anyone who will turn to him. The unpardonable sin is the sin you won't confess and you won't ask God to forgive. I don't believe that God says, 
Now, some people are so, so, uh, now have so much knowledge in the word of God, they come to this old preacher and they said to him, said, what does that white horse mean in the book of Revelation? He said, I can tell you. He said, well, what does it mean? He said, I just knew you could. I said, tell him. I said, tell him. What does it mean? He said, it means it's a white horse. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. And it's a pretty white horse too. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. There are people getting so carried away and so excited about things which don't have a dime's worth of good to anything about it. Why are we splitting hairs about people and, and people are dying and going to hell all around us? There is no problem with all this stuff. I know some people believe in the gap theory in Genesis 1 and 1, 2. Hey, I don't care. If there was another earth, God made it anyhow. I don't care. It doesn't matter one way or another. In fact, I believe if the Bible says it, I believe it. I may be crazy, but I believe the word of God. It's carried me thus far. It'll carry me a while longer. When I was 18 years old, I invited Christ to come into my heart, and he's been a real to me from that day to this day. And I've never had anything that I've enjoyed more in my life than my salvation. A lot of people think you're giving up a lot of things. Job didn't give up anything. God blessed him. You don't give up things. God blesses what you have, and he'll bless you continually if you'll just serve him. Look at this, and I'm done. He said to him, he says, here, he said, and as for that, he said, uh, uh, I'm turned to, I've got a new Bible here. I've decided I wore out my other old Bible, and I've got a new one. I haven't licked all the pages in this one good yet, so you bear with me. I've got to get over to the next page here. See, it's two, all these thin papers, you know what I mean? And uh, let's look at this. Uh, the Bible tells us many things that we need to understand, and it still hasn't come apart. Come here, you. All right. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them, and Satan fell upon them and took them away. And yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only have escaped alone to tell thee. And people said, Oh my goodness, that's terrible. Well, hang on. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped to tell thee. And they said, That's terrible too. So we'll hang on. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, and yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. That's even worse. Well, hang on. And while he yet was speaking, there also came another and said, Thy son and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and the four corners, uh, and uh, smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men. And they are dead, and I only am escaped to tell that. And Job heard all that, and Job said, well. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and let, sat down upon the ground and worshiped and said, Naked came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Have you ever heard people say, there's no reason for my mother or my dad to die. I'm angry at God. Dear friend, he's been so good to you, you don't need to be angry about him or about anything. Can I tell you tonight, Job's a good example. And we ought to follow in the steps of Job. I remember when I was a little boy, my dad used to work at the Blue Diamond Coal Company, and he'd come home. And he had to, this one old field where it was kind of elevated like that, and he used to have to plow it all the time. He'd plow it both ways to keep the dirt in place, I think. And he would go out there, and my dad, would, if he had a garden, he would plow it so much you'd sink in it. It was just almost like sand. And he would plow with that old mule, and he would leave footsteps in there. And I remember as a little boy, about five, six years old, 
trying to walk in my dad's footsteps. Somebody needs to walk in ours. You need to leave footsteps so people can see how a righteous man is making a real effort to serve a good God. We need some old time Holy Ghost powered right living Bible teaching witnessing soul searching happy Holy Ghost filled services. They think you know you think if you get emotional you're gonna, there's somebody's going to say you're, you're one of those weird places. Folks Baptists been around a long time. We were emotional before they ever had come into being. I wasn't raised a Baptist, but my kids are. And I'm going to tell you this much. I'm a Baptist because I believe it's right. And I'm a Baptist because it teaches the word of God. God promised to bless his word. He didn't promise to bless anything but his word. If we follow his word... He'll keep the lion's mouth shut. He won't let the fire burn you. He'll feed you by the, uh, by the river if he has to with a dirty raven. He'll supply the water. He'll take care of you. All you have to do is be a servant and get away from sin and let the Lord use you. That's all you have to do. That's all it takes. And every one of us can do it. And I'm glad that it don't cost money to serve the Lord because if it did, I'd have to stand outside the gate somewhere. Because I'm glad. Just a plain old simple person who made up his mind a long time when he met this Lord that he was worth serving. And I'm telling you folks, it's worth it. It's worth serving and following after the Lord. Would you stand with me please? Every head bowed, nobody looking around. Brother Tom, if you'd come play us a song. I'd like you to do this. Has God spoke to your heart tonight about anything? I don't need to know what it is. You're not confessing your sins to me. Who am I to you, for you to confess my, your sin to? When we, you may not even have sinned. You may have a burden. You may have said, for some reason, something is on your heart. You've been wanting to pray about it. You ought to do it. Pray about whatever God burdens you about. If you have to make a decision and you don't know what to do, God can lead you in the right path. God can take care of you. Just ask him and seek his advice. Father, as we come to you tonight, would you draw the hearts of these folks together? Lord, I don't understand and I don't know why we preach certain messages at certain times, but you have a reason and there is a reason here tonight. Lord, would you speak to hearts now and draw the net as only you can? May they come down to this old-fashioned altar, lay their burdens, their problems, their heavy heart on this altar and walk away with feeling the presence of a mighty God in their life. Help us to do that, Father, and help us to serve you and please you, we pray in your precious name. As he plays, would you come? Step out of your seat, come down, and just pray and ask the Lord for whatever you need because he's got a whole house full of it. He's got anything and everything you need. He'll, serve, he'll help you in any way you need help. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks near you. Be the first one. Just step out and come on down. Pray about whatever you need to pray about. Let the Lord help you. Why do you pray in church? Because we love you and we can help you pray. That's why we're here together. We're brothers and sisters serving the Lord.
say amen 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 anybody else amen 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 somebody else don't go home unhappy go home happy I, I'm going. Amen. 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 You know what? You can't keep the gospel inside the walls. It's not supposed to stay here. It's supposed to be part of you. You take it out and go give it to somebody else. If you have a good sponge at home and you just throw it in a bucket of water and let it just sit there, it'll ruin. But you take that sponge and soak it good and reach over here and wring it out real good, it'll get more water in it. Pretty soon you'll have all the water and you have to go get some more. That's why you read the Word of God. You read it, it goes into your mind. You can't take the Bible. It's not osmosis. It won't go through that thick skull. It won't do it. You can't put it on your pillow and, and read it. It won't work. My wife and I have read the Bible through numerous times and, and through that, and we're trying our best to get something that we can share with somebody fresh. I heard an old preacher saying the other day, he said, I was reading, and in my sanctified mind. <laughs> we need a sanctified spirit about us. Amen. All right. Let's, let's go home and, and we'll serve the Lord and have a good time at home. Amen. Brother Dave, why don't you lead us? Why don't you dismiss us?